Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webcast today. I hope your June is going well. I know this is a busy time of year for all school districts, so especially the district office. I, I made that mistake um, early in my career saying, oh, it must be quiet. I'm sure y'all have heard that, and boy, did I get told off. So I know your time is valuable. It's a busy time of year. Let's hop into the presentation and talk about the reporting changes to the KYCR Start Monthly Report, um, particularly concerning paraprofessional coaches. So during a little bit of housekeeping during the webcast today, we're doing this as a Teams live event. If you have any questions during the webcast, uh, great. Please reach out and let us know. In the upper right hand corner of your either your Teams app or browser, there is a little chat up bubble with a question mark. You can click on that. Down at the bottom is ask a question. Um, you can post a question. They are um, private unless we choose to publish them. We feel like it's a good question. If you're logged in as anonymous, that's fine. But if you ask a question, if you don't mind actually letting us know who you are, so we're just not responding to anonymous, it helps us know who the questions are coming from. Um, if you have any questions after the webcast, please send them to our team box. That is munis at education.ky.gov. And of course, as all of our webcasts, they were all recorded and will be archived. After the webcast is completed, I will send out a link with the um, link to the, the webcast that's stored on the KDE media portal. And if you're curious about what other webcasts have been done in the past, you can access the KDE media portal on the KDE website. Um, and there's a Munis grouping of um, webcasts and all of our prior webcasts are stored there. So just a little bit about me and the team who's on the webcast today um, is uh, I'm myself, Kristen Lambert, I'm the team lead and technical analyst. I work in the Office of Education Technology Division of School Technology Services. Kim York is also on this webcast. She's a technical analyst and we work closely with Kathy Pelletier, who is our Tyler Technologies vendor partner. We are lucky today to have some folks from KPPA joining us to assist with any questions. Crystal Hughes was on here. She's a school board manager and will help facilitate with answering any questions. Um, anything that we can't answer during the webcast, we'll of course take back and um, when we send out the link to the recorded webcast, include the answers to that. So some of you may wonder, where is the program update at? Well, it actually isn't out yet. There are two portions of the program update. The first is the addition of the state reporting codes program to the human capital management menu in Munis, um, specifically in version 2019. Version 2021, it is already there. That update was released on June 16th in service pack 2932. If you do not see that on your menu, that means you do not have regular updates being installed via Tyler Deploy. And you may want to check with your system administrator to make sure those are being scheduled. Uh, of course, any questions on Tyler Deploy and how to schedule those can be directed to um, Unis support via the TSM, Tyler Service Management, SAS queue for software as a service. So that's TSM SAS will help with Tyler deploy questions and automatically scheduling those. The update that actually does the program changes to our KYCers start monthly report and the KYCers retirement maintenance is still under development and not ready to be released yet. Um, we wouldn't release that until July 10th or after anyway. We want to let you go ahead and get those end of year report, um, the June report in before that is pushed out. Of course, as always, once the update is available, an email will be sent out with that information. And the next time Tyler Deploy is ske scheduled to update, that update will be applied to your Munis environment. So what exactly has changed so starting in fiscal year 2024? paraprofessional coaches or any pay received as a paraprofessional coach must be reported using a separate payment reason on the Munis period record. Um, payment reason is 14 paraprofessional. Um, also employees who are paraprofessional coaches um, only will be reported with a new position status of 11 paraprofessional and that would be on the KYCR's retirement maintenance screen. Also in addition to that if you um, should be using that payment reason of 14 paraprofessional 
to report employees throughout the year. So if they receive zero salary during a month, they should still be reported with their annual salary as the pay rate um, and the payment reason of 14 per professional. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit more, more about all these things throughout the webcast. So I mentioned there is a new position status on the KYCers maintenance um, screen. So when you get that update, you'll see that. And you have two ways of maintaining that position status. You can either manually maintain that on the KYCers maintenance screen. So any people, any employees that you have that's a pair only coach, you can just manually update their position status to um, paraprofessional. Or if you'd like to use the new employee build um, in the KY Sears Retirement Maintenance Program, you can um, help um, that automatically assign um, employees that are paraprofessionals to that position status. So you can actually add a new personnel status. I'm suggesting PA paraprofessional um, as a position status in the employee master. There's more information on the following slides. Um, if you do already have a position status in the employee master for para, paraprofessional coaches only, only, that can also be utilized. This is an example of KYC, KYCR's retirement maintenance screen, and you can see on the bottom right the new position status of 11 paraprofessional. So once that update has been applied, you will have that available to you to update the records for those para coaches. And then, as I mentioned, optionally, you can add a new position, a personnel status um, to the employee master. And like I said, when the new employee bills are run, it will automatically um, code those employees to the position status of paraprofessional on their KYCers retirement maintenance record. So if you've never added a status code before in, um, in MUNAS, there is a program that's under payroll setup called miscellaneous codes. You would navigate there and select STAT status codes from a long list of options. And at that point, you'll see a list of different um, personnel statuses available to you. From there, you would select add and the code would be PA for um, the paraprofessional, and you put in the short description and the long description. Again, this is pu purely optional to you if you want to maintain the paraprofessional status on the KY Sears maintenance screen, you can choose to do so. Also, if you have a code that you use for a paraprofessional coach only, we could use that, and I'll talk about that in another step. So the state reporting codes, um, option that is now available on the human capital management menu as of June 16th um, was added because it is used by many different clients and Kentucky is just kind of late to the game on it. It offers a lot more flexibility for the end user to add and modify codes used in various state reports. The menu path is on the screen. You'll find that as more of our Kentucky specific programs are updated, that we will be using the state reporting codes program to modify, add, or change codes as required um, by the reporting agencies. So you, what's exactly a, a state reporting code? It's a crosswalk code. So in Munis, you have a code for a full-time permanent person, but KPPA has a specific code in their system to signify a full-time person, and that code is Z, zero, 00 for full-time. For a para coach, they've added a new position status of 11. So we need to um, include that in Munis. So Munis knows how to code these people on the electronic file that's sent to KPPA. So in that crosswalk um, code program, you select um, the crosswalk codes from the ribbon. You'll select define, and there's a drop down list of different types available to you. Select Sears, CERS, KDE, POS for position status and accept, and then you'll see the list of different codes available to you. So if you added a position, a personnel status of PA, you would select update and put 11 in the crosswalk code. If you already have an existing um, personnel status for a para only coach, you could utilize that in, as well and select update and put 11 as the crosswalk code. 
Estimated additional comp also has some changes to it. If you had any amount in that field that was for para coaching pay, that will need to be deleted for your fiscal year 2024 reporting. Um, amounts in that field are always going to be a yearly amount, and it's a guaranteed amount the employee is expected to be paid for any additional pay not considered to be a bonus or paraprofessional coach pay. Um, if you're not sure what is considered estimated additional comp, please reach out to your reporting reps at KPPA to determine um, how that should be reported. The Sears Start Monthly Report Generate screen has also been updated. A new column has been added for the paraprofessional pay type. So any payment received from this pay type will be reported as um, the payment reason 14 paraprofessional. Also, if you have an employee that is a full-time or part-time employee and has that second job as a coaching position, their pay will now be split out. So their full-time job will be reported um, on that full-time record and a second period record will be created for their paraprofessional pay, whether they've received paraprofessional pay during that reporting period or not. They will still have that paraprofessional record, that period record. This is an example of the updated Sears Start Monthly Report Generate screen. You can see down at the bottom right hand corner the pay types associated with um, any para pay. If you commingle your the pay type used for paraprofessional pay with any other type of pay, you will want to clean that up. Only paraprofessional pay pay types should be used for coaching pay, and those would be listed in the bottom right hand corner of the report. So zero salary months for para coaches also should be paid. So all these para coaches should have a KY Sears retirement maintenance screen. Um, and during the month, if they did receive no pay, you would still report a period record with zero salary in their annual rate in the pay rate field. Now I've heard that many of you don't maintain job salary record for your coaches and that's fine. I can understand that. Um, for the time being, you will need to manually update the record with their annual salary in the pay rate field, but we've heard you, we know that's gonna be an issue. So I've been working with state reporting and we have a follow-up release to this current release that's yet to be sent out where um, we'll have a field on the KY Sears maintenance screen to include that annual amount that is paid to para coaches. So if you do not have a job salary record set up for your para coaches, you do not need to change how you do process payroll now. You will need to keep that pay rate field updated with the annual amount until that release is ready. The estimated time on that, they're, they're hoping to have this completed by the end of July. I can't guarantee it'll be available though for your report that is due August 10th. So just wanted to let you know that's there. We're thinking about it. We're hoping to get it out. I can't guarantee a time on that. Um, next question or next item is let's talk about the contract days and scheduled hours that are reported. So for paraprofessionals, they need to report zero contract days, zero scheduled hours, and they need to be reported as yearly as a type of rate of pay. And that's being done behind the scenes. So any period record that is coded with the payment reason of 14 paraprofessional, it'll automatically report it, be reported in the electronic file with their position status, a paraprofessional, the contract day, scheduled hours. So if an employee has a full-time job and a regular and a coaching job, that paraprofessional pay will come in that way. So it'll be two separate lines. Some reporting reminders. And again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the Q&A. So the end dates on para-only reporting, and I apologize, I just heard, learned about this a few days ago, but you do need to end date the para position um, for this fiscal year. So before your, um, June report, which is due on July 10th, you need to end date all paraprofessional only coaches. And you can do that either on the KY Sears retirement maintenance screen before you generate your June report that's due on July 10th. If you've already generated your um, report and do not want to regenerate it again, you can also add those dates and the end reason, which is change in position status to the period record 
and that will report on the electronic file. Of course, you have to do that before you create the electronic file. So sorry for the late notice on that. Before you, after you've done your June report and you've moved on to do the July report that's due in August, you do need to do some cleanup on the KY Sears Retirement Maintenance screen. So you need to change that position status to paraprofessional for all those para-only coaches. You'll need to populate a new start date for that position of 7-1-2023 and make sure to clean out that additional comp field. So it should be zero. If you had any coaching pay in that field, they need to zero that out. A couple other reporting reminders. Always around July and August, I start to get questions about the warning message seen on the right when you generate the report. And that is totally expected. That's what's coming up for all your 10 month employees. It says EE with position status 00, zero which 00, zero is full time employee should report non zero contributions. It's a warning. It's telling you, hey, you have a full time employees and you're not reporting any wages or you're not reporting any contributions. Yes, we know that it's a 10 month person. Um, that's fine. And you'll wanna make sure that the um, generate screen has the 10 month pay types is in the um, 10 month column. And when the employee generates a zero pay, they'll have um, a pay reason of 11 summer months. So all those records will be 11 summer, summer months with zero pay and zero um, and employee contributions. So that's an expected message, just a reminder. Um, oh, I also throw out a reminder that for the KRS um, end of year, I'm sorry, KPPA end of year report, that's due on July 20th, and you can run that at any time. Um, another little note here is don't forget we have a KDE Munis Enterprise ERP site available to you that includes um, postings the, from email that we've sent out. There's documents, there's a link for wildcard characters, um, the addresses on the screen. It's a great resource. Documents are stored there from Tyler Community that I cannot publish um, on the public KDE site. Maybe some uh, anything I've pulled off that I thought would be handy for any school districts to use. And just a final thing before we move on to questions, I can see some questions in the box that maybe KPPA can help us answer. But again, afterwards, just send it to the Municipal Education and there's the plug for our website. So let's see here. Let's go on the questions. I know Crystal, maybe um, you can unmute yourself and we can chat about these questions with the folks. Sure thing. So let's see here. So, so for pairs, we need to report them each month, even though they have no pay, report with the zero amount paid and then their rate, their annual salary. And yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. um, every month, KPPA wants employees to have continuous reporting. They don't want to have a gap and missing records on that employee. So um, for those paras, they need to be reported every month and they need to have their annual salary. Salary is their pay rate. And it looks like, um, of course, sorry again for the late notice, some people have already submitted their June report and they didn't end date those paras. Any um, advice, Crystal, on how those are gonna be corrected? Yeah, so what will happen is when you report your July um, or when you submit your July report with the new paraprofessional position status, it will error out because our system is going to be reading that they have another enrollment <clears throat> that had not been terminated. So that's something that we'll just have to correct uh, during error correction. So you may have an increased number of errors for that month, but it's just something that we'll just add the end date on our side if you've already submitted. Of course, we we know you don't want the errors. So if, it, if you're in time to get those end dates in for those people who are para only, um, so they're in an intermittent position status now and they're para only. If you've not yet submitted your June report, please add the June 30th uh, end date with the change in position status uh, in reason. And then you'll be okay for July to start reporting the new paraprofessional position status with a July 1, 23 begin date. Um, and those are just for people who are para only. So if they're para, in addition to a regular full-time or part-time or another sub uh, 
classified position, we do not want you to put an end date. We want you to continue using the same um, begin date that you that you are currently using. It will still error out. We know we're going to have a lot of errors that we're going to need to correct because we'll have to create those new enrollments. Uh, but if you've already submitted, it'll just be an error and we'll correct it. Okay, thanks, Crystal. So I have another question here. I've already generated and posted my KY series report for June. What would be the next steps? Well, you said you posted it. Have you actually submitted it? That's the question. Um, if you have not yet submitted it, you can regenerate that report again and again. Of course, if you've made a bunch of corrections to any period records, you, you don't want to have to do that. And you can always indate those para only positions on the period record. The period record has a start end a start date, an end date, and an end reason. So if you have not submitted those yet, you can fix it on the KY Sears period records. And um, Crystal answered what would happen if, if you've already submitted and the errors that come. Same thing that we just went over. It's just going to be yeah. an error. We'll just have to correct it on our side in July. Thanks, Crystal. Um, let's see. So question again about they don't see the update in their system yet. Um, that the new position status or generate screen has been updated. That's correct because that has not been released. You may may have been a few minutes late to the webcast. So the status code you actually have to create yourself and the directions tell you how to add that status code for the employee master. That's um, just core MUNIS functionality. For the KYC or start report, that has not been released yet. That's not ready for prime time. The state reporting code um, update that was released in on June 16th. So if you don't have those updates being automatically posted via Tyler Deploy, you need to work with your system administrator to make sure that those auto updates are enabled. So the state reporting codes um, update is out there, but the KYCers retirement maintenance and the KYCers start monthly report update is not yet available. We'll of course communicate that when it's ready. Let's see. We have many coaches, some classified, some certified. Will we only input into KY Sears maintenance of classified coaches, no certified coaches? And correct, KPPA only cares about the classified employees. Correct, Crystal? That is correct. So, yeah, don't worry about all those certified folks or that also coach. We're only worried about um, the classified employees. Okay, Can I just add to that? Sometimes I, I hear from reporting officials that they're using the same pay type for persons of a particular position. Um, for example, um, some persons are, some agencies are using the same uh, pay type for bus drivers as they do sub bus drivers. So if you're using the same pay type for your paras for certified or classified, you may need to create a new pay type. That's pretty much correct. You don't, you can't co-mingle that. If it's a para, para coach, they should um, have a pay type that's not used for base classified pay or extra classified pay. It's just for para only reporting for that Sears start generate monthly report screen to work. Okay, well, I'm going to hang out here for another minute or two and see if any other questions come in. The guide was sent out. We'll send out a link to the recorded broadcast. Um, if you have questions, that's Muniz Team Box is the best way to reach out to myself and Kim so we both can manage those questions. I know you have a busy month ahead of you. Um, as soon as that update's available, I'll certainly let you guys know via an email. And Can I, I just add we're... something, Kim? Sure, quick? go ahead, Crystal. Um, just from a question that was emailed earlier, um, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that KPPA does expect a record for every month of a uh, classified employee's term with you, even if that amount is zero dollars. If you have para only employees, that's all they do for you. Um, you are not expected to or you should not submit contributions. You should report the para only employees as non-participating paraprofessional 
uh, position status so that you are not having to refund those contributions at the end of the fiscal year because they cannot uh, get service credit based on para only service or any paraprofessional pay. I'm so glad you brought that up. I totally forgot to say, I kind of alluded to that, but it wasn't clear. So that's true. I know some people are concerned about reporting paras because they don't want to withhold contributions. It's not the contributions we're talking about. We, we, as Crystal mentioned, you're not expected to have contributions for para only professionals. Um, but you are expected to report them every month. Okay, well, I think we're going to wrap this up. Thanks everyone for attending. If you have any questions, please send them to the box after the webcast. Oh, wait, I've got one more question. We'll go ahead and answer it before we close off. Well, I need to report paras that are not regular staff members, such as parents that coach. Are, do they receive money? I guess is the first question. If they're paid, they would be reported as a paraprofessional coach. Um, there's that volunteer position that I know KPPA put out a year or so ago, but I'm not aware of anyone actually using it. So um, Kelly, I, I kind of answered that. I guess if you'd like to email us um, privately with that question, but Anyone that receives pay is what we're talking about. Here's some more questions. So, okay, this, uh, this may be difficult. Many times our para hire information doesn't come through until the end of the season when the para is ready to be paid. So all the months in the school year prior to that haven't been reported. Is that going to be a problem? Well, as far as Munis is concerned, you can't, you obviously you don't know, so you'd have to put in the record as of that month. Crystal, do you have any insight? Uh, my, from KPPA stance, you should be reporting a record every single month of employment, even if the money that you're paying for that month is zero dollars. So you could put, you could do a whole lump sum of the para pay at the end of the year, but you should still be reporting a record every month of employment with zero dollars otherwise. So it sounds like um, probably as far as the school district needs to work with whoever is do hiring these coaches to make sure that you have that information. So those employees are in Munis and you can report them every month with zero salary until the time being where they're paid. Okay, well, more questions keep coming in. I think that was a duplicate. Um, well, okay, it looks like I got the same question several times. Um, let's see here. I pay my student workers with the same pay type that I put on para coaches. Just to make sure I understand, I'm going to set up need to set a new pay type for coaches. So I don't believe student workers are reported. Um, Crystal, can you confirm whether or not that's true? That is not true. Student that's workers. That's not true, okay, I stand correct. Student workers should be reported. We see that often where we'll get a reporting official say, but there are student workers, so we're not reporting them or we're reporting them non-participating. A student worker, if they are receiving pay classified wages that are reported on a W-2, should be reported to us every single month of employment. And if they are working in a position that's four hours a day or greater, they should be reported with contributions. There is no exception or exclusion for student workers. So that answers the question. Those student workers should have a cl normal classified pay type. Now, do you wanna set up a pay type just for your student workers? That's up to you. Um, but you would want to split that out because the pay type used for para only coaching needs to be unique and separate from normal classified pay. Um, somebody asked if I'd send out the slides. They were actually sent out, um, but I'll send them again. They were sent out with the reminder. Let's see here. Here's a good question. If a pair only coaches for us, but pays into KPPA in another district for full-time work, do we withhold? Great question. I was actually going to bring this up. Um, 
one of my team members or messaging me separately and saying we might want to mention this. Um, so I'm glad that it was asked. If your para coach is working um, and contributing with a, their duly employee with another participating agency, we expect that you're going to, I mean, obviously you're gonna report them every month. That is, a doesn't matter where they work. We wanna report every month. Um, as far as contributions are concerned, we say that if a person is duly employed, you should report them as participating and not non-participating. So you should submit contributions for those folks. Okay, let's see. It looks like we opened up a can of worms, Crystal, with the student workers things. Questions keep <laughs> coming in. <laughs> um, I'm sure you probably see it says, so for student workers less than four hours per day, are they exempt from contributions? Um, I don't want to put a period on that and say that they are exempt from contributions. What I will say is that if they are working less than four hours per day, you're probably safe to report them as non-participating without contributions. However, just be aware that at the end of the year, much like everybody else, they will also go through the averaging process. And if they ended up averaging, we will bill for omitted contributions if you report them as non-participating. Okay, let's see here. Next one. Again, it's more stuff about students, student bus aides saying they should. So I think Crystal essentially touched on that already again. Right. Um, I would just say blanket classified positions. If your student workers or any worker is receiving wages for a classified position, that you are reporting on a W-2, they should be reported to us. Um, I've got a question here about the state reporting codes program. Um, they're getting an error. Don't, don't worry about that quite yet. It may be because the update to the KY Sears retirement program and state report has not been pushed out. I think it may have just added it to your menu. So. That is why you may be getting the error at this point. Um, don't, that's tied to, it's just added it to the menu. It's not working yet because the program's not been updated yet to accommodate to use that. So that's probably why you're getting it. It's just on the menu. Let's see here. If our parents don't get finalized till until October, can we put do a start date of 10 1 2023? Um, I'm not really sure. Terminology probably, I'm, I'm not really sure what finalized means. Um, so what you want to do is your start date is their hire date. So if they were hired as of July 1, then that should be the start date that you're reporting for them, regardless of when they actually start coaching, uh, you want to give them the, the July one day. I have a question about pay types here saying, should there be a different pay type used for classified versus certified paras? Um, as far as KY Sears reporting goes, if an employee does not have a KY Sears retirement maintenance record, but that pay type is listed on the generate screen, you may get a warning for that certified employee so you don't need to you do not need to create two separate pay types um of course we may find down the road that you want to but if you're using one pay type for para coaches for both classified and certified the program will still work as intended so of course you don't want to have a ky sears retirement maintenance record for that certified employee so no need to split out that pay type at this time. Okay, so question about pair coaches saying they are non-renewed every year and then hired again throughout the year. We would only need to report after they have been rehired for the year. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct. You'll just use the, your start date is going to be the hire date for that. So I guess that would be the same for the next question too. So if you don't know who those people are until October, then the assumption would be that October would be their hire date and you would use that date. So I'm only referencing the July one for those people that are carrying over from year to year or if they're being hired at the beginning of the year. Yep, good point. 
Well, I was ready to close down the webcast like five minutes ago and a bunch of questions poured in, but they were good questions. I'm glad everybody pushed them out there. We'll hang out for another moment. See if there's any more questions. And Crystal, it was wonderful having you here to answer all those questions that I couldn't answer. <laughs> to make oh, sure not we had the right, right answer. Um, I would also just encourage um, everyone who's still in attendance that if you have uh, more questions after uh, the webcast that maybe KPPA can help you with, please feel free to reach out to your uh, RC representative that's assigned uh, to your agency. And if they do not know the answer, they will ask me. And if I don't know, we will find it for you. Okay, well, I think we can close down the webcast. Thanks so much for everybody who attended. I'll send out a link of the recorded webcast um, the next day or so. And um, also we'll send out something um, when the program is available. Oh, well, here, one more question. Are there pairs given the money back on the non-averaging sheet at the end of the year? So that's, I guess, assuming if you are collecting deductions, which are not expected on para only coaches. Right, so if you're not reporting them as non-participating and you're reporting contributions on them, yes, they will be refunded at the end of the year and then you will have to pay those refunded contributions back out to them. So that's why we we really suggest that if they're para only with you, that you do not report contributions and that you report them as non-participating. So I had a question about version 2021 um, being updated. Version 2021, we have three school districts out there on that version. The program is not out there. You have a menu path for the state reporting codes and you the, the tie into the KYC or start reports not there yet, but you have that already on your menu. So another question. Um, how do we decide if a track coach averages if they only coach track? Um, I think that's probably goes for any type of coach, right? And so para only, which yeah. means you should report them as non-participating. Averaging will not matter for them. They won't go through the averaging process. Non-participating paraprofessional is how you should report them. Okay, I'm calling it at this point. Last question, I think we are done. Thank you, Megan, um, for, for producing. Go ahead and shut down the webcast and thanks everybody for attending. See you later, bye-bye.